Hi everyone, this is Rihanna from A Frugal Life and today we're going to be talking about 14 things rich people do every day. But I have read a great book by Tom Corley called Rich Habits. So it was written in 2010, so it is about 10 years ago. So some of the statistics are a little bit out of date, but they all still apply and still work for your daily life. So Tom Corley about 10 years ago did some research on the daily habits of rich people versus poor people. And you need to read the book to get his definitions of rich people versus poor people. But for our purposes, this will work as a general vague term. People you think of as rich and have enough and people you think of as poor as don't have enough. So these are the habits of the different income levels. So as we read through them, you will see if you follow some of these habits, you'll actually become successful in your own life and may up your income and eventually move from the poor or middle class income to the rich income. And of course, if you are already living comfortably, these habits are always good on a daily basis just to keep your income and your success flowing. So Tom, for five years, studied the daily habits of 233 people he considered wealthy and 128 people he considered more on a lower income. And these are the differences that he found. So your first tip is going to be eat healthy. 70% of the wealthy people studied eat 300 junk food calories less per day, while 97% of people studied in a lower income eat 300 or more junk food calories per day. And of course, eating healthy is good for your body. It's good for your budget because you're not going to the doctor as often. It's good for you all around in general, just so you feel good and are able to be productive. So next we're going to talk about focus. 80% of the wealthy people studied were focused on a single financial or life career goal. This focus helps you be more productive, helps you gear all of your life choices towards that goal, and it obviously helps you to accomplish that goal sooner. In contrast, only 12% of the lower income people studied were focused on a single goal. And I am going to give them this. When you're a lower income, you need to focus more on survival than on accomplishing a big goal. But even if you're lower income and you are focused on survival, you can gear your productivity and your free time into focusing on learning something or accomplishing a big goal. And I actually am going to have a video coming up soon about financial goals and how to accomplish them, how to break them into smaller parts and what you need to do to get to your goal faster. So watch for that in the upcoming videos. If you do want to make sure that you don't miss that, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell down below. Of course, being healthy and successful not only involves food, but it involves exercise. 76% of wealthy people studied in this study practiced more than four days of aerobic exercise per day, while only 20% of poorer people did. I'm going to give the poor people the benefit of the doubt here is that if you are more low income you focus more of your time on working to earn money for survival than you have for exercise but there are a ton of things you can do which are free and you can do for home in your spare time for exercise so if you do want to add those four days of aerobic exercise into your schedule it is possible to do it totally for free so next is listen 63 percent of wealthy people studied listen to audiobooks for their education on their commute to work while only five percent of the lower income people in this study did this so listening to audiobooks during your commute to work can help you learn a new language. It can help you focus on life goals if you do self-help books. It can even help you relax if you just listen to literature. So listening to audiobooks during your commute if you're driving or on the bus is a great free way to gain new skills. And if you are taking a bus and not driving or you're a passenger, you can also read books instead of listen. The next is a big one and is one that I live by and that is to-do lists. 81% of wealthy people in this study maintained a daily to-do list while only 19% of poorer people maintained a daily to-do list. So I am a big time scatterbrained. I live by the list. I have to have my to-do list, both for my regular personal life and for my career and my job. I keep a list side by side running of both of these things to do every day. If you have not tried to do a written to-do list, go ahead and try it. It'll totally change the way you focus your day. If you're not a paper person and you're a digital person instead, you can definitely download dozens of different free apps on your cell phone that'll help you keep a to-do list on a daily basis. So I thought this one was a little bit strange in terms of success and making money, but this is happy birthday calls. So 80% of wealthy people made happy birthday telephone calls to friends and family members, while only 11% of more lower income people did. So this was back in 2010. Now people are apt to do it on Facebook, but making a 
personal phone call to somebody on their birthday actually makes a huge difference in your networking, the way people feel about you, the way people think about you. And if they are looking in the future to give an opportunity to somebody, they're definitely gonna think of you if you're the person that called them on their birthday when nobody else did. So this is a big one we're gonna talk about in my next video, and that is write down your goals. Writing down your goals makes a huge difference in actually accomplishing them. In this study, 67% of people wrote down their goals if they were in a higher income bracket, as opposed to only 70% of more lower income people that wrote down their goals. So writing down your goals, whether financial or otherwise, makes a huge difference in whether you actually accomplish that goal in the end. So this is a big one for me because I am a reader, but in Tom Corley's study, 88% of people in the wealthier income bracket read daily at least 30 minutes for our education, their career goals, or their skill level, while only 2% of lower income people did. So this one was interesting to me. This one is speak your mind. And in this study, only 6% of wealthy people spoke their mind in their career and their daily life, while 69% of people in the lower income spoke their minds on a daily basis. So I would love to hear what you think about this one. Do you think it's important to speak your mind or is it important to stay quiet in most situations to pursue your ambition? I always thought it was better to speak your mind rather to not speak your mind, but maybe that's why I'm not in the wealthy bracket. So go ahead and put your comment down below about what you think is better, speaking your mind or not speaking your mind. So the next one is important and there's only a few more to go. The next one is networking. 79% of wealthy people say they network on a daily and weekly basis while only 17% of the lower income people said they networked. So networking is of course the best way nowadays to get ahead in your job and your career and it's easily done online with things like LinkedIn and Facebook. Just keeping a hold of those people in your network and keeping in touch with them can help you get better opportunities down the road. This one I am totally guilty of but is watching too much TV. 67% of people in the wealthy income bracket watch one hour or less per day of TV. All that number of one hour or less for lower income people is only 23%. So too much TV is definitely a hindrance to making your lifetime goals financially or otherwise, obviously because you're wasting time watching TV when you could be doing something more productive. So this next one proves that maybe it's important what you watch on TV as well. So we're talking trash TV, reality TV, the Kardashians, the Duggars, anything with a low education value, but a high entertainment value. So 6% of wealthy people admit to watching trash TV, while 78% of poorer people admit to watching trash TV. And that may just be people that admit it. Obviously, we're taking their word for it. But obviously, if you are dedicating a certain amount of your time to watching TV, watching educational programs or programs that are good for the soul and the heart are probably better than watching trash TV programs like reality TV. So this next one may have something to do with the type of jobs people are working. I'm going to give it to the poorer people that maybe they have jobs that require them to start work early already. So they're not going to get up extra early. So maybe the wealthier people have more time before work because they have different types of jobs. But 44% of people in the wealthier income bracket get up three hours before they go to work. So they have time to be more productive in pursuing goals while only 3% of the poorer income people do. But I'm going to go back to the poor income people maybe working retail jobs or labor jobs that require them to get up very early anyways, while the wealthier people may be working office jobs where they start later anyways. So the last one is something I believe wholeheartedly in and I try to impart on you in many videos is you always should be learning more, improving your skills, doing more to improve your life skills, your personal skills, your career skills. Every day is good for your heart, your soul, and your mind. So 86% of people in the wealthier income bracket believe in improving Improving your skill set on a daily basis, while only 5% of the people asked in this study believed that improving their life skills was important to achieving their goals. So that's it. I know that these statistics are 10 years old, but I believe they still all apply right now, even though the numbers may be different. Please give me your comments down below and tell me what you think. What of these habits and traits appeal to you? Which ones will you do in the future and which ones do you do now? And I will talk to you in the next video.